Welcome to Arkansas Wildlife. Several years ago, the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission implemented a special youth deer hunt that takes place a week before the regular opening of modern gun deer season. And on this week's show, we're headed to South Arkansas to take part in one of those youth hunts. And a little later in the show, we're gonna take some venison into the kitchen and cook a spicy Jamaican curry that'll keep you warm on the coldest winter nights. But first, fall and winter aren't just for hunting. It's also the time of year when the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission stocks trout in urban bodies of water through the family and community fishing program. All that in this week's winner of an Arkansas hunting and fishing license right after this break. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all, for less. The Family Community Fishing Program actually is a, a avenue for people that live inside cities to have a closer opportunity to go and fish. We have close to 40 locations around the state. On the warmer months we stock in catfish, we do four stocks of catfish, and then when it gets cooler, um, starting in November, we, we, start, we start stocking trout. We do four stockings of trout at these 40 locations around the state. Here at MacArthur Park, trout season is getting kicked off. See how my babies are doing in here. Oh yeah, they're ready. Hello, everybody. Look like you're doing good, doing well. Everybody's ready to catch you guys. They've been calling all week. There you go. It takes about a year and a half to grow a rainbow trout. Uh, they actually, the hatchery is actually located on the tip of Missouri on the state line, and it takes about three hours to bring them here to Little Rock. So it's a, a major task, <laughs> major feat, because you gotta realize trout aren't native to Arkansas. I mean, it's a cold water fish. It has to be at least 55 degrees water temperatures. Normally when we stock them in uh, November, our last stocking's in, in, in February, so people generally catch them all out before it starts warming up, so that's, that's a, actually a nice thing. Nice deal. Yeah, we actually do uh, community fishing events at our locations, and that's just to pro basically promote it. Uh, bring awareness to the program so people know, hey, that's a place I can go and fish after the event. Uh, it's, it's pretty successful. Some of our events bring upwards of uh, over a thousand people, and we do about 25 or more of them a year. We actually have incentives, you know, if you catch one of our tag catfish or one of our tag rainbow trout, we've, we've given away as much as a boat motor and trailer for one of the, uh, <laughs> for the, as one grand prize. This is the tag, this is the tag for the trout. It's a pink tag, now with a catfish, they're green. This small tag has a phone number on there, and of course, uh, the name of our program, Family Community Fishing Program. If you catch a rainbow trout or a catfish, you just mail the tag in to us, not the fish, just the tag, and you're gonna get a prize. If you wanna go to our website, agfc.com, and there's information on the website on where we stock. We generally stock once a month um, when the weather permits for trout, and then of course for catfish when it's warm. Some of our Family Community Fishing Program ponds are restricted only to seniors and uh, children under age 16. For the general public, um, you keep up to five rainbow trout. So with the rainbow trout, you have to have a, a trout permit. Uh, that goes along with the regular fishing license fee, but if you're under age 16, you, don't have, you do not have to have a license. You got your back down? One, two, three, go! All right, 
He's been talking about fishing since he was two years old. And we decided today, since the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission had this, this wonderful event today, we thought, yes, we said we we're going to bring him out. And we want a fishing pole. The parents bring the children out. A lot of these events that we do, community fishing events, have free food, door prizes. Of course, we have music, games, and whatnot. Watching a child bring in his first fish, it's like a light that goes off. You know, the, the child actually made a connection to what's in the water and what he actually captured. It actually builds their self-esteem. Kids are excited. I mean, it's, it's you, got, you got to see it to believe it. It definitely wasn't snowing like this when we went on the youth deer hunt. It was actually a pretty warm weekend. Some great memories of that youth deer hunt. Went out with uh, one of my buddies, Kyle Milam, and his daughter, and actually his daughter and my granddaughter, Autumn, are teammates on the Arkansas Dolphin swim team, which is how we ended up at this particular deer camp for the youth hunt. Kyle gathered some of the other members from his camp who had kids, so we had several kids, and bunch of different opportunities to go out and shoot video of their hunts and uh, you know just see what happened. The special modern gun youth deer hunt has been on the books in Arkansas for many years. It's an opportunity for the kids to go out and really get the first crack with modern guns before the regular season opens a week later. Kids have to be between the ages of 6 and 15 years old and had to be accompanied by an adult mentor. Now that rule changed this year, where if a child has passed hunter education, he does not have to be under the direct supervision of an adult mentor. Going deer hunting isn't just about sitting on the stand or hunting deer, it's also about the whole experience. And you know, deer camp by itself is, is a great experience. We had a great time on that night before opening morning built a big campfire, sat around it, we cooked all kinds of great food. Kids are going to be kids. They're roasting marshmallows, making s'mores, running around, whittling sticks, and just being kids and running around the camp and having a good time. And on the youth hunt, that's what it's all about. You just want the kids to have fun. got up opening morning and I headed out with my granddaughter Autumn and we sat in a, a pretty young pine plantation with a couple shooting lanes where Kyle had been putting out some corn for them and some rice bran. Unfortunately we sat there for a long time and uh, never really saw anything but I was really proud of, of my granddaughter. I didn't know how long she'd sit out there and you know be ready to go back to camp and ride four-wheelers or play with her buddies but she sat out there for about three hours and you know I think I was about ready to give it up before she was. Hey I've got a pretty short attention span but kids you know notorious for, for short attention spans so sometimes it is a challenge to get them to sit there for a while uh, in the stand because you know they're, they're, they're they want action and uh, when there's not any action that can be a challenge at times. I had taken Autumn out on a couple of duck hunts before, but this was actually our first deer hunt and first time to sit in the stand together and, you know, we didn't, we didn't take home a deer. She didn't get a chance to shoot at one. We didn't see anything, but it was still a wonderful time to sit there and talk to her and, you know, you get to know your friends, your family, whoever, a little bit better when you're one-on-one -on -one in a stand like that and you're whispering and talking about things that are happening in the woods, listening to the world come alive and the birds and, you know, everybody's watching intently to see what's happening. So, you know, it's a great time to bond with, with the people that are close to you. We got back to camp and fortunately one of the young people had taken a deer. That was Braden, who was the nephew of one of the members, Carol Renault, and he got him a nice, nice little buck to start off the youth hunt. This is the best part of deer camp right here. We messed around the camp, had a heck of a breakfast, uh, rode some four-wheelers around. The kids generally entertained themselves and then uh, after maybe a nap, not saying for sure, but maybe there was a nap involved. We went back out that afternoon. Uh, my granddaughter had gone over to her other grandparents' house, so I went out that afternoon with Kyle and his daughter, Emma. We sat on a stand on a pipeline uh, in the middle of a wooded area, a couple of feeders, and 
We finally saw some deer, but unfortunately, Emma just couldn't get the rifle up and find it in the scope and not spook the deer away because they were kind of looking right at us. Meanwhile, that afternoon of the first day of the youth hunt, uh, Scotty went out with another one of the camp members, Sean, and his son Maddox, and they sat on the stand for a while, and then right before the sun started to go down, a nice doe came out, and Maddox put it on her. We got up again Sunday morning and sat on the stand for a while and just not a lot of deer moving that morning. Finally, Scotty and I had to pack up and, and, and head home for the weekend. But we got a phone call later on that Sunday evening and my granddaughter's buddy, Emma, finally scored with the deer right at the end of the day on the last day of the youth hunt. Of course, you can take a kid anytime you want. I mean, it doesn't have to be the youth hunt, and it's so important to get young people involved outdoors and pass on our traditions. It means so much to us here in Arkansas. But the youth hunt, the special youth modern gun hunt, is a little different because, you know, when the adult can't hunt, they really got all their time to devote to the, to the youth hunter and explain woodsmanship and, and teach them how to be an ethical hunter and, and to pass on our traditions in the right way. in the air we are well into deer season so we thought it would be a great time to share with you one of our favorite venison recipes this is a jamaican style venison curry with squash it's basically a simple stew and it's a great preparation for maybe an older deer that you harvest this fall we're going to take a little bit more than a pound of venison here this is a cut off of the hind quarter we're going to use a little bit of jamaican style curry along with some coriander and some allspice we've got acorn squash but any type of fall squash will do we're going to create a great flavor base with onion, garlic, and tomato, add a little bit of habanero to kind of spice it up and heat it up. We're gonna use some chicken broth to kind of pull our stew all together, keep that venison nice and tender, and then we're gonna to top it off with some cilantro and serve it all over rice. A very fantastic, spicy, flavorful dish, and sure to keep you warm on the coldest fall or winter night. We're gonna start with our venison and we're gonna cube it up into, oh, you know, one and a half to two inch cubes here. Again, this is a cut off of the, the hind quarter. Just want some bite-sized pieces here. I like to do about a one inch cube. Man, look at that beautiful meat there. Now, we're gonna put all of our venison in a bowl here. We're, to this, we're going to add our Jamaican curry powder, a little bit of allspice, and a little bit of coriander. We're gonna mix that all up there. Make sure the meat's well coated good and seasoned. Man, that curry just so aromatic. You can smell that. It's so good. Now, we're going to just set this aside in the refrigerator for about an hour and let the meat soak up some of those flavors. While the venison marinates, we'll prep everything else, starting with our acorn squash. Whether you're using acorn squash like this, butternut squash, pumpkin, whatever the case, very difficult to peel. First thing you want to do is have it like this and scoop out the seeds, some of that pulp. After you get the seeds scooped out, you wanna quarter it and then parboil it for just a few minutes and it makes it much easier to take that rough skin off the outside of it. In the meantime, let's prep the rest of our vegetables. Pretty simple, we're just gonna Cut the seeds and pulp out of the tomatoes, dice the onion up, mince the garlic, and dice up one of the habanero chilies. The 
the venison's marinated, our vegetables are prepped, let's head over to the stovetop and build our venison and squash curry. Start with a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil for our venison. Smell, that curry is just fantastic. We're just gonna brown this for six to eight minutes. We're not trying to cook it all the way through. We just wanna get a good sear on the outside. Kind of seal in some of those juices. The meat's done. Take it off, set it aside. We're gonna add it back a little bit later. We're gonna use the same skillet here to get our onions sweated and a tomato cooked and build the base of this dish. Add our onions to the same skillet. We might get a few tomatoes in there, but that's okay. Let's cook those onions for three or four minutes until they start to become translucent. Our onions have cooked for four or five minutes. We'll add the tomato now diced Roma tomatoes. Let those cook another two or three minutes. Start to release some of the juice. A little trick you can use to thicken this up is to add about a tablespoon or so of tomato paste. This is also an appropriate time to add the rest of our prepped ingredients, our garlic, our habanero, We'll mix that up. And then we'll add squash. Yes, yeah, starting to come together here. Let that cook for about a minute. Let that garlic start to release some of its oils. And then we're gonna add Chicken broth. Three quarters of a cup. Really starting to look lovely here. Let's add our venison with all those good juices back into the skillet. Mix that up. I think we might have had a little bit more than a pound of venison here. We're gonna, we're gonna fill this skillet up. Man, that looks great. I'm gonna reduce the heat to low and just let that simmer for about an hour and a half to two hours. It's gonna fill the house with a wonderful smell and you're gonna be tempted to wanna take it off early, but let it cook. Let's get this venison get nice and tender. Let all those flavors come together for this wonderful venison and squash curry. Our dish has been cooking for about two hours. That venison should be nice and tender by now. The squash completely cooked, retain all that good juice in there. Man, this is gonna be good. So let's take a little bit of rice. Gotta get plenty, because we wanna soak up all that good juice. There we go. And let's make sure we get plenty of pieces of venison and lots of juice there. And then we're gonna top it. A little bit of cilantro. There you have it, Jamaican style venison and squash curry. That's it for this week's episode of Arkansas Wildlife TV. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel where you can catch up on all the past episodes or watch your favorite episode again and again. Arkansas Wildlife presents the Watch and Win Giveaway. 
During each episode of Arkansas Wildlife, we'll give away an Arkansas resident hunting and fishing license. At the end of this season, we'll be giving away $500 worth of hunting gear with everything you need for your next hunting adventure. It's all provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit the Arkansas Wildlife webpage and enter at ArkansasWildlife.com. This week's winner is Eric Lee from Fayetteville. Congratulations and thanks for watching.